organisms and environment, sexual and asexual reproduction. So today we're going to compare the results of uniform or diverse offspring from asexual or sexual reproduction. First, I want to start a video with you, and it's a brain pop video on asexual reproduction. Can you reach the milk? Dear Tim and Moby, how do you tell the difference between male bacteria and female bacteria? From Jerry. It's not a riddle, Moby. Bacteria don't have males and females. They reproduce asexually, meaning without sex. Okay, have your laugh. Asexual reproduction is pretty common among plants and simple animals. In some plants, like the strawberry, a stem extends away from the parent plant with child plants growing all along it. Aspen and poplar trees do the same thing with their roots, shooting them out in all directions to grow new trees. A single grove of trees like these might all come from one parent. Farmers have asexually reproduced plants for thousands of years by taking cuttings from one and replanting them. However asexual reproduction is done, the children plants are always genetically identical to the parent plant, so they're actually clones. Clones share the same genetic information, so the parent is basically a twin of the offspring. In sexual reproduction, a female egg cell is fertilized by a male sperm cell. Each cell contains a half set of the parent's chromosomes, the structures that contain our genes. When the two cells combine, the genes do too, making a unique new individual. But in asexual reproduction, the parent's genes simply replicate then split in two. The process is similar to cell division in eukaryotes. Those are organisms with nuclei in their cells, like plants and animals. Cell division goes on all the time in your body. It's how you grow. In prokaryotes, single-celled organisms with no nuclei, cell division is reproduction. The entire organism divides through a process called binary fission. Bacteria are prokaryotes that reproduce this way. Some organisms can reproduce asexually by a neat little process called budding. In budding, a child develops as a growth on the parent's body. In some organisms, like the hydra here, the bud falls off and becomes an independent creature. In others, like corals, the buds stay put, just one more clone rooted to the entire colony. And you've probably heard about how a starfish that gets its arm cut off will grow back a new one. That's a process called regeneration, which in certain cases is a form of asexual reproduction. Like, if an injury is severe enough, the animal can regenerate into two or more separate children. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that sponge will regenerate. Well, it's, it's made of plastic. So another video on asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction. When an organism reproduces, it makes another of the same species. Some organisms reproduce sexually. Cows make more cows and pigs make more pigs. Sexual reproduction combines genes from a mother and a father, making a genetically unique organism. Other organisms reproduce asexually. In asexual reproduction, all of the genes come from a single parent. Asexually produced offspring are genetically identical to the parent. There are many methods of asexual reproduction. In some one-celled organisms, cell division is a method of asexual reproduction. Bacteria cells reproduce through cell division. The cell makes a copy of its DNA and sends it to the new bacteria cell. 
Some bacteria can reproduce as fast as every 20 minutes. Another method of asexual reproduction is budding. Unicellular yeast cells grow new cells off the side of another. When the cell is developed, it falls off and a new yeast cell is produced. Some organisms produce offspring by splitting into pieces. A sea anemone can split down the middle, resulting in the production of another individual. Sexual and asexual reproduction produce offspring. However, asexual reproduction makes genetically identical offspring. Sexual reproduction makes genetically unique offspring. So try taking a cutting of a plant. You will be making another that has the same DNA as the parent. You just help the plant to reproduce asexually. So in summary, let's summarize sexual and asexual reproduction. So the type of methods of sexual reproduction are internal fertilization inside or external fertilization. What is the advantage of sexual reproduction? Well, the offspring will be different from its parents. Genetic variation allows the species to adapt to its surrounding. Good traits are passed on and strengthen the species, which increase their survival rate. The fertilized egg can sometimes survive in adverse conditions. Some disadvantage of sexual reproduction, it requires two sets of sex cells, eggs and sperm, usually produced by two parents that must get together to mate, often slower, more complex, and less reliable than asexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction can happen from budding, regeneration, and fission, usually faster and easier, so a new plant or animal can colonize an area more quickly. A mate does not have to be found, so no travel is involved, which saves energy. It's le less complex and more reliable, can produce large number of offspring very quickly. Some disadvantages of asexual reproduction. The new organisms are genetically identical to their parent and each other. Adaptation does not occur. Organisms with no variation cannot adapt and may become extinct. So for your starter, a star test question. A, a group of students prepared a table listing the types of reproduction that occur in several organisms. Based on this information, which of the organisms can produce offspring that are genetically identical to the parent? So remember, genetically identical is going to be asexual, okay? So there's no variation. They're identical to the parent. So anywhere it says asexual, amoebas, so yeasts also reproduce asexually by budding, hydra asexual by budding, and ferns asexual. So everywhere we saw asexual, we understand that the offspring is going to be identical to the parent. So your answer here is D. Okay, let's drag and drop asexual sexual cards to identify each descriptor as asexual or sexual. So let me minimize. And for asexual, let's see. Asexual, we can say offspring are all identical. Prevents organisms from adapting. Okay, sexual would be where offspring gets half the genetic information from each parent. Sexual requires two parents. Variation, so offspring are different. That's going to be sexual. Offspring have 100% the same chromosomes as the parents. That's going to be asexual because they're identical. One parent is asexual. Able to adapt to the environment. Sexual. 
Okay, so let's drag and drop asexual sexual cards to identify each descriptor as asexual or sexual. A litter of black and white puppies are born to a solid black mother and a solid white father. So this is going to be sexual because it has two different, it requires two parents and the offspring are different from the parent. A potato is buried in the soil. The eyes of the potato grow into new potato plants. That's going to be asexual. They're going to be identical to the parent. Amoebas are able to divide, forming two individual identical cells. Identical is asexual because they're just dividing. A female frog lays her eggs and then a male fertilizes them with sperm. That's going to be sexual. That's happening externally outside of the female. A hydra develops a bud, which eventually breaks off the parent to form a new individual. This is going to be asexual. And then the starfish here would reproduce asexually by regeneration. Strawberries send out runners through propagation. This would be asexual. They'll be identical to the parent. And the lizard uh, regenerates its tail, okay, and that would be, oh, no, what you have here is that one lizard is fertilizing the eggs, so that is sexual, okay? And today you have a Schoology quiz on three different teaks. First teak is to identify the functions of the system of the human organism. So we're going to be looking at the circulatory, respiratory, skeletal, muscular, digestive, excretory, reproductive, integumentary, nervous, and endocrine systems. You're going to differentiate between the structure and function in a plant and animal cell organelles, including cell membranes, cell walls, nucleus, cytoplasm, mitochondria, chloroplast, and vacuole and compare the results of diverse offspring from sexual or asexual reproduction. Good luck.